Okay, so we ran out of time just before we were finishing up here, and there were a couple more points that I thought it would be really good for us to highlight in Daniel chapter 3 before we finish up. Um, one of them for sure is about the mighty men and what happens to them and why it happens. Mm. And just to touch a little bit more on the king and his anger and how that works into our lives and then kind of finish up with the Son of God. You know, how did he know it was the Son of God that was in the furnace? I mean, that's a really good question. And then we need to finish up the last few verses and kind of touch on what's going on there with King Nebuchadnezzar because that sets up for chapter four, mm -hmm. which, man, we, chapter four is just powerful. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. really powerful. Mm -hmm. So, hey, Jason, would you have prayer for us? And sure. We'll get right in. Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to study your word. We thank you that we are seeing and learning uh, principles on how to stand in these last days. And we just ask that you would continue to be with us as we go through this study mm -hmm. and uh, guide our thoughts and our conversation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we're in Daniel chapter 3, and we're picking up where we left off. In our last session, we finished up with this area where Nebuchadnezzar was really, really angry. And it says, you know, he was angry before, already angry. But it says now he's even angrier. And we talked about the idea that he's angry partly with himself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because he's realizing in himself, man, those guys are so like together and peaceful and calm and they have no fear. And I thought I could intimidate them and mm -hmm. I haven't been able to intimidate. I've been able to intimidate everybody but them. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he gets even angrier now. And I think part of that anger is intimidation. Mm -hmm. I think people get angry because they're trying to intimidate or they want to intimidate. Right. And so it says here that he is so angry. I'm just looking for the verse here. Um, you think he was battling with his own insecurities? Yes. He was battling with his own insecurities. He was fearful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and Verse 19. Verse 19. Um, when Nebuchadnezzar was full of, then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and the form of his visage was changed mm. against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm -hmm. And we'll touch on this in another verse, you know, later on when he says something like, I thought I saw three men and there's four men. You know, the, the wise man, his, all of his counsels or whatever, you know, when he asked this question um, to them, um, basically they say, yeah, that's true. That's true, King, whatever you say. You know, whatever yeah. you say, that's true, you know. Yeah. There's no, he's used to just obedience. Right. He's used to people just saying, yes, yes sir, yes, sir. yes, yes. Yeah. 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 And so it really bothers him here. It, it brings out a lot of his insecurity. It causes him to come to a, to a height of anger that seeks to intimidate, to, to put it mildly, to put all of his strength in the, the armor flesh, mm -hmm. in my power, in my might, in right. my intimidation, in my right. ability to intimidate. Yeah. Um, looking again at the prophetic uh, implications here, remember that this whole, that this whole thing that's going on here actually includes another individual, and that other individual is Cyrus, mm. Mm. right? The reason they're not bowing down to this image that says my kingdom is gonna last forever because they know mm -hmm that another nation is coming and that that nation is going to overthrow Babylon, right? Mm -hmm. They know that there is one more powerful that is going to be more powerful than Nebuchadnezzar. Mm. And they're saying, you know what? Um, yeah, you, your image and what you are saying is going to be is not going to be. Cyrus is coming and he is going to be, he is going to overthrow your kingdom. Mm -hmm. and obviously remember that Cyrus is a type of Jesus. Right. And so whenever we are facing these trials, these conflicts, like whether in our lives on a personal level or in the prophetic level, mm -hmm. we have to remember that there is one greater than the enemy that we face. Amen. And that one greater is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that's, again, part of the reason why they're like, we're not mm -hmm. bowing down because mm -hmm. right. you're not the most powerful one. There is mm -hmm. one that is more powerful. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And now as you move through the story, he, he makes the decree that the furnace is heated seven times hotter. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when we stand for God, the initial trial doesn't get easier. Mm. It can get harder. That's true. It can get hotter. It can become more intense. When you stand for God, you are standing against all of the ire, all of the anger of the dragon, of the devil, of Satan and his forces. And anyone that is occupying his territory, who's one in his army, is going to come against you. So he's, he's pushing even harder right now. So sometimes as, as believers, we think, okay, I'm going to stand up for God right now and he'll be with me and everything will be okay. Mm. And it gets more intense. We're like, whoa, what is this? Mm -hmm. For example, case in point, Job. 
Mm -hmm. Job loses his wealth, he loses his family, he loses everything, and the next thing you know, it's not getting better, it's getting worse. Mm -hmm. Then Satan comes after him with his physical body, his physical health. Right. Mm -hmm everything looks like it's going downhill and then his wife struggles she's she's you know faltering a little bit man I, I we should just curse God and die and Job's like don't be silly you know he puts his arm don't be silly you know God gives God take we need to trust him right now honey they work through that whole process and many times that's what we need when you can imagine these three guys and this is what I love about this this isn't like Daniel and the lion's den where he's by himself these three guys at least have each other right. mm -hmm. they have that community of faith mm -hmm. and we need community of faith and so they're standing together through this. But what's interesting to me is, as it goes on further, it says, because the king's command, um, let's read, Jason, can you read for us verse, I think it's verse 22. 22? Yeah. Okay. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the, f and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay, there are two factors here that lead up to the death of these mighty men. And they're called mighty men. These guys were tough guys. They, so the king, two things. The, the furnace is heated seven times hotter mm -hmm. and the king's commandment is urgent. He's in a hurry. He wants to get this done. So, so you know, normally maybe when the furnace is getting heated up like this, because you think there's people putting stuff in, it's getting hotter and hotter and they're gonna test it and they're gonna see how close they can get or whatever, but they don't do any of that. The king is urgent about this, we need to just do this. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so these mighty men bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to throw them in and what happens to them? They get killed. They, they get, get killed. killed. Now, the spiritual lesson here that I think is so powerful is that there's safety in the fire. There's safety in the trial. Mm. Uh, if we're not willing to go all the way with Jesus, if we're not ready to go all the way with Jesus, we're not going to make it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These guys, yeah. these guys, stop at the door. They stop at the door. As soon as we face the trial, if we stop and turn around there, it's not going to happen for us. Wow. Mm -hmm. We've got to go all the way with Jesus, and these guys go all the way with Jesus Good. because He's in the fire. And when we we realize that He's in the fire, fire, we can count every trial a blessing. Mm -hmm. yes. We can count the joy in the battle when we know that He is there. That's mm -hmm. right. And that's what I love now about this whole idea of facing these trials. There's no way we're not going to have trials in our lives, family, church, community, nation, world. There's no way we're not going to have trials. True. But if we know that God is there, we can count it a joy. That's what James says, count it all joy when yeah. you fall into diverse temptations. Yeah. The interesting thing is, too, is when, you know, when the guys who led them into the fire, they ended up you know, being killed in Revelation chapter 13, verse 10, it says, he who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who mm. kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's mm -hmm. the patience and the faith of the saints. Wow. It's just interesting. Wow. That's like an immediate, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> yeah, they were leading them into captivity, well, leading them into death. Yeah. Um, what they thought was going to be death. Yes. And instantly they were, they, they were, were dealt with. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Here's, that's, now I love this again, Jason, just want to bring this up because you've made that connection with the book of Revelation. So the book of Revelation just kind of goes through this prophetic scenario and you read these mysterious verses and you're like, you know, he that leads in captivity, and you're like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. But then you go to Daniel mm -hmm. right. and then there it is, it's yeah. unlocked. Right. Oh, that's what it means right yeah. there. Mm -hmm. So again, those two books together, but yeah. Daniel giving us the practical application mm -hmm. of some of this stuff. And it's though when God read the, uh, uh, inspired the book of Revelation, it's as though he he knew that we'd be going back to the Bible and back to Daniel to get understand. So right. he's writing this all out, you know, real, real symbolic and real like down dis distilled stuff. Like, yeah. and we just have to break it open, break yeah. it open, and see what it means. Mm -hmm. And that's how we do that. Mm -hmm. So I love that connection. The lions then too, same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Lions then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, to the book of Hebrews tells us that our God is a consuming fire, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the reason He is a consuming fire is it's. You know, we don't get it, but it's a powerful reason. Uh, we think of fire and we're typically afraid of fire. Mm -hmm. But according to the Song of Solomon, chapter eight and mm -hmm. verse six, mm -hmm. the Bible says that fire is a symbol of love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the reason that God manifests himself as fire is because God is love. Mm -hmm. So fire is love's heaven. Fire is heaven's love language, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Wow. So when God created Adam and Eve, they were actually able to stand in his presence mm. and not be consumed. Right. Right? Right. Mm. But when they sinned, they were now afraid of the fire. Mm. Mm. They hid from God. Why? Because mm. to them, 
God was now a consuming fire. Mm. Mm. So the entire plan of salvation is really God trying to find a way to make us fireproof again. Mm. Oh. And we could stand in his <laughs> presence <That's good. laughs> and not be consumed, mm -hmm. right? So think That's about Moses good. and the burning bush. Mm -hmm. right. Moses sees this bush, he's like, how is it that this bush mm -hmm. burns, mm -hmm. but it's not consumed? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God was trying to t let Moses know, listen, this is my ideal for you. Mm -hmm. I want you to be able to stand in my presence mm -hmm. and not be consumed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so how does he do that? He does that through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm, which John the right. Baptist says, I will baptize you, Jesus, when he comes, mm -hmm. he'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with, with fire. fire. Right. So if you've seen someone baptized in water, they go down in water, right. and when they come up, mm -hmm. they're covered in water. Mm -hmm. right. So when you're baptized in fire, mm -hmm. you're, you're going down in fire, mm -hmm. and you're coming up on oh. fire. Oh, come on. And so on fire. You're on fire. <laughs> I love it. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. And so check this out, because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were, they had the fire in them. Mm. Mm -hmm. The difference between those mighty men and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego oh. is that they were fireproof. Mm -hmm. wow. They could stand in God's presence without being consumed and it was literally demonstrated as they're thrown into the fire. The form of the fourth is in there wow. and the fire doesn't even touch them. But these other guys, Mm -hmm. were not fireproof. Wow. So God's ultimately That's trying good. to make us fireproof, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? We are the ones, according to the book of Isaiah 33, I believe That's it's verse it. 14. I think it is. Yeah, I was looking for that verse. Isaiah 33, verse 14. Why don't you read that? Um, this verse just really throws people for a loop when they're like, wait, what did that say? <laughs> mm -hmm. He said Isaiah 33, it says, uh, yeah. verse 14. Mm -hmm. It says, the sinners in Zion are afraid, Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Mm -hmm. Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? Mm -hmm. mm. And then the answer is, he that walketh righteously. You got it, Jason? Mm-hmm. Mm he Verse that 15? walketh righteously. Yes. What else does it say? And speaks uprightly. He who despises the gain of oppressions, who gestures with his hands, refusing bribes, who stops his ears from hearing uh, of bloodshed, and shuts his eyes from seeing evil. He will dwell on high. His place of defense will be the fortress of rocks. Bread will be given him. His water will be sure. Mm -hmm. mm. So that's powerful. That text mm -hmm. is telling us there that it's the righteous that will burn forever. Mm -hmm. Mm. Not the wicked. Mm -hmm. Oh, the righteous oh, will stand good. in His presence. The mm -hmm. righteous are going to be mm -hmm. fireproof through all eternity. They'll be able to stand in God's presence without being consumed. Yes. While the wicked exposed to that same fire, mm -hmm. it's the same fire. Mm -hmm. huh. But because they were unprepared, mm -hmm. they're destroyed by that fire. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. you know, the the three Hebrews versus the mighty these mighty men, mm -hmm. it's another snapshot of actually, of what happens at the end of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wicked are destroyed, the righteous are able to stand in the presence of God mm -hmm. without being consumed. Wow. And, and this has its parallel wow. again in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. So we go to the book of Revelation, we find this picture in Revelation chapter 15, 15. Mm -hmm. that isn't necessarily understood by just reading Revelation 15, but when we go back now and we go through Daniel and we connect with Isaiah and we understand what the rest of the Bible is saying, yeah. you read this verse, Isaiah, I'm mean, excuse me, Revelation 15, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Got that, Revelation 15, verse 2? Mm -hmm. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire, and those who have the victory over the beast, over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having harps of God. Okay, so you got the sea of glass mingled with fire. Mingled with fire. And who's going to stand? And what did they get victory, who did they get, what did they get victory over? The beast, the, the mark, uh -huh. the, beast. the image, uh -huh. the image, the image. Yes. What were they facing in Daniel chapter 3? The, Im the image. The image. Yeah. Wow. And they stand on the sea of glass mingled with fire? Yes. They stand in the fiery furnace. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Wow. That's good. That's that is good. really That's good. good. That mm -hmm. is good stuff. I love the point that you made about um, them, the wicked not burning forever, mm -hmm. because that, again, is one of Satan's misrepresentations yep. Yep. of the character of God. Yeah, turned it upside down, didn't he? Turned it upside down. God loves, God loves people too much to allow them to burn forever in mm -hmm. agony. Mm -hmm. And the devil flips that whole scenario. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Flips it. Yeah, that's what and, God And is. the key here that I think really opens that up 
because we may say that, we may argue that, we may say, well, God's not going to burn the lost forever, but we don't add that the righteous are going to stand in the everlasting flames. Yeah. The righteous mm. are going to stand yeah. with the burning fire of the Holy Spirit, yes. Yes. filling them forever. Yes. Yes. So yes. if we're letting the wicked and the righteous have the same end, yeah. then we're not making a distinction between the two. That's right. That's right. And That's think right. about how miserable people would be who are just determined to do their own will and don't want to be in the presence of the Lord. How miserable would they be to yes. spend an eternity with the one that they don't and that they don't value I, and appreciate. This is an example mm -hmm. I, I you know, love sharing is that during, in the days of Noah, mm -hmm. like just think about it, um, there was one set of creatures that were not inside the ark that didn't die. Mm. Hmm. You know that? Mm -mm. Yeah. The angels? No. The sea creatures. Mm. Just think about it. They weren't like, mm. oh, oh, water! Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. That's true, right? the sea creatures. So in that same sense, there's only one set of creatures mm. that will survive when Jesus comes again, mm. and it's fire creatures. Hmm. We have to be born again of his spirit yes. so that when he of comes water again, and fire. we're just mm. like, oh yeah, fire, not a problem. Mm -hmm. Have yeah. you been on, that's why he doesn't want us to be lukewarm. Mm -hmm. mm. He wants us to be hot. hot. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because when we're hot mm -hmm. and we see him as he is, mm -hmm. Hot attracts the hot, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Fire attracts the fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we have to become those fire creatures. And how do we become those fire creatures? Mm -hmm. By being baptized by the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. by being submersed in the fire of the Holy Spirit. I like mm -hmm. to say this way, we need to learn how to flame on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Let's good. Let's talk about that a little bit, because that's, again, that's kind of, you know, it's doctrinal, it's theological, but I think it's also practical. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, when he comes, He's not going to talk about himself. You were talking, Jason, I thought it was really interesting how, you know, the wicked, they're not going to want to be in the presence of God for all eternity. Mm -hmm. They're not going to want to have the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is other-centered. All the Holy Spirit does is talk about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we like to talk about ourselves. We like to, the focus to be on us. We're living in an I world, an iPhone, an yes. iMac, an mm -hmm. I, and the Holy Spirit is coming. And you know, the disciples, they were still having that eye issue all the way up until the crucifixion. And even after that, they were, they were struggling. Here's what they were struggling with. What's gonna happen to us now? They're gonna persecute us, they're gonna kill us, they're gonna get us, they're locked the doors, they're afraid. Why? Because they're thinking about themselves. Mm -hmm. When they confess their sins and all their selfishness and all their self-thinking, the Holy Spirit fills them. Tongues of fire come down on their heads. Right. The doors burst open and all they can talk about is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right. The Holy Spirit fills them with this other-centered focus. Mm -hmm. And so they're just filled with Jesus. So when we're talking about being fireproof, we're talking about none of self and all of God. And that's what these three guys have. Mm -hmm. They're like, did you just say, who's going to deliver us? Mm -hmm. Is that what you just said, Nebuchadnezzar? Because <laughs> now it's not about us anymore, mm -hmm. right? right? Now it's yeah. about God yeah. and we're not moving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when we have that mentality where we're focused on God and our whole life is just God, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit can come. Can you imagine the Holy Spirit filling a person that has 10% of self and 90% of God? There's still, there's still a lot of self there that yeah. God's going to empower. Yeah. And we see that sometimes. We do see it. But God wants all of self out, and He's going to fill us with more of His Spirit. We're, we're, we don't want to be filled 90%. We want to be filled 100% right. with His yeah. Spirit. Yeah. Right. And that looks like focusing on Christ, focusing on Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's what these guys were doing. Mm -hmm. That's what the end time people will be doing in their crisis. Mm. So how did he know it was the Son of God? It's like Nebuchadnezzar's looking, and he's looking in there. He's like, let me get my glasses. <laughs> oh, there's four, and that other guy in there, we're looking at here at verse 25, he answered and he said, Lo, I see four men loose. Didn't we put three? I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. How did he right. know it was the Son of God? Right, how did he know? He said the form. Yeah, the form of the fourth. Yeah. Mm. That looks like the Son of God. And that's a good sermon title. The form of the fourth. The form of oh, the fourth. Oh, you, you know, you've been coming up yeah. with these sermon <laughs> no, titles here. I know it. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah good. but that sermon title doesn't answer my question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did he know? I wonder if he was um, mm. taller mm -hmm. and, you know, looking regal and mm. just had a different kind of form than anybody else. I think that's part of it. Um, I think also, I'm just, I'm just going to say this, I think also that Nebuchadnezzar 
had been introduced to enough of the God of Daniel and his three friends mm. that he could recognize him when mm -hmm. he saw him. Mm. In other words, what I'm thinking is, is that, that Daniel and his friends had talks with Nebuchadnezzar. Because I think Nebuchadnezzar was, you know, convicted intellectually in Daniel chapter 2. Mm -hmm. Your God is the God of gods. But I don't think it ended there. I think Daniel was a true mentor and a true pastor at heart. And he followed up with Nebuchadnezzar. He mm -hmm. like, you know, let's have some follow-up visits on that conviction that you had about, you know, my God. And he started to talk to Nebuchadnezzar about that. And I think Nebuchadnezzar was wrestling, you know, with his fears, mm -hmm. with his, you know, with his, with his pride and with what Daniel was sharing with him. And Daniel was talking about, you know, I imagine Daniel might even have shared the verse in Isaiah 43. Mm. Like, you know, this is, because then began, it's like, how can, I don't understand your God. Why would he do this? Why would he let his, all his people, I mean, I know he's, it seems like he's an amazing God, like he's delivered, but why would he let all, that dream was amazing. That was, but why would he like just lead you cat, like, and so they explain some of the some of the prophecies about Jesus and about Messiah and Isaiah, of course, 43 and 53, et cetera. So I think they communicated enough to Nebuchadnezzar about God, about the Son of God, that when he's, he's like, that's, that's the Son of God, that one they talked about when they said he'd be with them in the fire, the one that they, they that, that gave them the dream that I had, the one that, whoa, that's got to be him. That's got to be him. That's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. As you look at this story, there is so much there. Mm. I think what was Nebuchadnezzar thinking as he saw these three first three people in the fire, mm -hmm. right? And he, that must have been a message to him. Mm. Those three people in the fire must have been a message to him. What? What message? Three, three, Those three, three people in the fire must three. have been a message to him. And, and I could imagine oh. him thinking, <laughs> wow, these are, they fear God. Mm -hmm. And, and they give glory to him. They give glory to him. And this message that they gave me, that, my, that mm. Babylon is mm -hmm. fallen, mm -hmm. like, it, it must be true. They're keeping his commandments. They're keeping his commandments. Mm. And, and they have faith in, in Jesus. Jesus. And mm. they just condemned everyone that bowed down to this image. Mm -hmm. That's the third angel's message. Three angels' message. Whoever people. bows down to this image will be cast into a, I mean, will be, I mean, it's that's almost a great like, connection. That's just crazy. a great connection. Yeah. And then, that's and just then a great connection. we know that there's not just three angels' messages, mm -hmm. right? We know that there's a fourth, fourth angel fourth to prepare angel. That's right. that solidifies that lightens the, whole the earth thing. with the glory of God. Yeah. And the appearance of that fourth mm -hmm. must have must have solidified mm -hmm. in Nebuchadnezzar's mm -hmm. mind. Come all on. that they have said is true. This is like, all revelation. This is just, wow. Like, of course, it's three and then a fourth. Yeah. That's Revelation wow. 14 and 18. Isn't that right good? There. <laughs> yeah, that's just powerful. Ooh, that's stuff. Good. So is that going in your sermon? Uh, that's going in the sermon. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going I'm to preach that when I get back. <laughs> yeah. We'll see who preaches it first. That's right. You will. I'm on a different subject right now. All right, so let's get, let's, this is beautiful. Let's just finish it up here. We've got uh, 26 to 30. Uh, Yvonne, would you like to read those verses sure. for us? Sure. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire, and the satraps, administrators, governors, and the king's counselors gathered together, and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of the fire was not on them. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and, and delivered his servants, who trusted in him, and they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made an ash heap. Mm. He's because such an extremist. He is. He's so extra. <laughs> because there's no other god who can deliver like this. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Okay, a couple thoughts here real quick. No, we're, on this, we're on the three angels' messages, right? <laughs> we're on the three angels' messages. Okay. <laughs> I saw another angel flying in the midst of yes. God's Every nation, kindred, okay. tongue, and people. Yes. The princes, the governors. Remember, they're from all over yes. the world, right? right. You got that? Yes. Matthew 24, 14. <laughs> and then it says, 
that have delivered his servants that trusted in him. They had faith in yeah. Jesus. Yes. They had the faith in Jesus. Yeah. You go, you go. No, he's Anything just... else that? He's, worship. He's preaching a crude version of the three angels. Yes. yes. And they worship God. They yeah. didn't worship the beast. They yeah. worship God. It yeah. says they worship... His own version, like, we'll cut your house and dung, he put your house in the, in the dung hill. And <laughs> yeah. He's learning. The, the, the torment will yeah. send up fire and brimstone yeah. forever yes. and ever. Yeah. Right. I mean, we say extreme, but he is. He's preaching that, that and yeah. then promotes them in Babylon. Yeah. So it's really interesting, isn't it, how, how Revelation is really summarizing what's already been written. Mm -hmm. in practical language, yeah. Yeah. the way that it's written here, it's so practical. Yeah. It's actually these, these, these literal tests yeah. of whether we're going to worship man in his image or whether we're going to worship mm -hmm. God, we're gonna, right. whether we're going to trust God through the fire and the flame yeah. in the flood or whether we're going to trust um, in ourselves and in mm -hmm. what humans can do for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful, powerful. Any other thoughts here? Yeah, you know, one thing I will, will say about Nebuchadnezzar is he is dedicated to whatever he goes for. He <laughs> yeah. is dedicated to it. Good, good, and then good. he gives 110%. Like, if you don't worship this false god, I'm going to kill you. If you, you know, if you don't worship this, true now god? this statue, I'm going <laughs> to kill you. If you don't worship the one true god, I'm going to kill you. Like, so he's give me dedicated. my dream, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> That's right. He is dedicated. 110%. Mm -hmm. Got to love his enthusiasm. Yeah, that's true. Just Nebuchadnezzar got to get it. Killer. Got yeah. it to the killer. right you know place. What? I L L A. This is yeah, a good killer. point. Killer, killer N. This is a good point because <laughs> in Revelation 3, the, th the Laodicean church, it says, I wish you, I wish you were cold. Mm. I wish you were hot or cold. Oh, cool. he, Nebuchadnezzar's cold. You know, he's not fully committed, but he's 110% for whatever he believes in. Mm -hmm. right. He's sold out for what he believes in. Yeah. Right. And Christians sometimes, that's a rebuke to us. Yeah. Because we're not sold out. Mm -hmm. you know, we're just like, oh, lukewarm, but we're not sold out. So I love that thought, Jason. That's a really yeah. good thought. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's good. Good chapter. Good. Very practical, powerful. I love the parallels between this and the book of Revelation. Really yes. uh, open up our eyes to see that. And a lot of preparation now for Nebuchadnezzar because as we go into chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar is going to have this incredible testimony of his full heart surrender and conversion experience. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a powerful message for us. It is. It is. Praise God. Amen. 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 Amen.